Hello lovely people, I'm K3N and welcome to my channel. Um, in this video I just want to show you through these, not all of them, not every page, but these four journals um, where I've stitched with found natural materials, so leaves and stems and so on. And this is kind of to accompany the Monday video in the Slow Stitch project. Um, I think it's week 27. Anyway, it'll be called Stitching with Natural Materials or Stitching with Leaves and I'll put a link to it below. So anyway, here we go. Okay, so <clears throat> here are some of my stitch journals. I'm not going to show you every page of all of them because that would take hours. I just wanted to show you some of the places where I've used leaves and other plant materials. Um, so I'm going to get three of them out of the way and start with this one. This one is the first real sort of proper stitch journal I made. Well, sorry, I didn't make the journal. Um, I bought this journal. <laughs> you see it doesn't close anymore. Look how round it is. Um, I bought this journal from a local maker where I used to live in England. And um, it's from 2016. Before then I was doing little projects and keeping them, you know, in different ways. And, and I saw this beautiful journal in my local art centre and I, and I bought it and kept it from the 7th of July 2016. Um, and then after that I started making my own journals. So I hope I'm in the middle and everything. I'm going to try and go, you know, at a reasonable speed. Um, so this is, this is all 2016. These are little um, sycamore le seeds just stitched onto a scrap of kitchen paper that's been rust printed. I haven't treated them in any way. They've been in there for eight years and they're still pretty much intact. Um, I just stitched them, you know, just with sort of functional stitching really. I just wanted to kind of demonstrate that things are more resilient than you might think, especially if you keep them in a journal. And there's some more sycamore seeds stitched directly to the page with um, cross stitches. I actually can get these out as I go. Uh, this here is actually a foxglove flower. And I can see for I was journaling while I was camping. And it said, uh, evening stroll, found this on the path, a little fox lost his glove. So all I did was press that in there. Now I haven't stitched it, it's just glued on. Um, probably with a glue stick. Don't use anything fancy. Um, and obviously it's lost its colour, but again, resilient. Um, this is a little weaving that I did. It takes me straight back to when I sat and did it on, on Exmoor with my daughter sat next to me. Uh, it's using wool, but in here you see some reeds woven in. Still, I didn't treat them in any way. Perfectly sturdy. I won't keep saying it. It might be obvious to, to many of you, but I know that some people are always nervous about using natural materials. Uh, this is a piece of bracken, a frond of bracken. And all I've done is stitch that to the paper, just with a sort of a couching stitch, really, between every junction of the little fronds. And there's another sycamore. It's a feather. You can use feathers as well. It doesn't have to be, only be plant material. Any Anything you find really that's that you can imagine using in your work. Just You might need to be inventive sometimes. Here I've found some little pieces of slate. I'd been walking where there were some standing stones in a field. So I picked up these three little pieces of slate and some sheep's wool which was on some barbed wire which I stitched down there. And can you see all I did was just a big cross over the little stones and they've been in there all this time and I often look through my journals and you know mention of Sirius there. <laughs> he would have been young then. Um, on this piece, this is a little piece of cloth weaving with silk and cotton. Here's a little heather flower, again just couched on. And this is the gorse, a little flower of gorse, or whin they call it up in Scotland. And the gorse is yellow and the heather is this pinky purple colour. If you're not familiar with, you know, I don't know that everybody knows heather and gorse. But that's that inspired the weave and then I stitched on some of the actual flowers. The colour in the gorse and the heather are actually still pretty good. Obviously they're in the book away from the light. But there I took inspiration from the plant materials, made the stitch piece and then stitched the plant materials on. 
Um, this is a little leaf of sorrel. Again, it's just glued on, not stitched, but I could have stitched it. A little bit of Joni Mitchell there. Don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you've got till it's gone. Um, down here is a little silver birch leaf. Again, just glued on. Oh no, I'm telling a lie, actually. It's stitched along its spine. Now I don't think that's waxed or anything, no. It's, and it's perfectly sturdy. So you'll be stitching on the back. So you have to be prepared when you're stitching with these materials that they might break. So you have to try to just go with that, you know, and if it breaks, it breaks. And if you have two or three leaves of the same kind, then you've got spares. I don't go mad foraging things in general because, you know, I don't want to take all the things. I kind of try and just take a few precious things. But if you want an oak, a specifically say an oak leaf, for example, if you take four or five oak leaves, then one of them will work. You know, you've got something to experiment on. Um, these are ash leaves stitched on here. And again, I, I couched there. You see, I went up the spine of the leaf. So you have to kind of examine the structure of the leaf and think about where do you think is the best place to stitch. And an ash leaf is quite fragile, so couching it up its spine seemed to me to be the best way to um, you know, to have them sturdily attached. So that's the end of that journal. That was made by a woman called Freddie Gibson. Um, I don't know if she's still making. Uh, she w is Somerset based, I believe. But yeah, it doesn't even close anymore. <laughs> so that's that one. Um, here's the second one I wanted to show you. This was, I did some machine stitching on this. It was a long time ago. Handmade button that I bought from a man on Exmoor who was making them on a the market. Rust printing. Um, I just marked a few in here as well. This is from 2016 as well. This followed on directly from the other. Um, this is a Cotinus leaf, smoke bush, Cotinus cagigria. It's a great eco printer. Um, this is not a great eco print. It was eight years ago. I have got better. Um, so I eco printed with the leaf and then I stitched an actual leaf onto the eco print. I just thought that was a nice thing to do. And there I just did these stitches round the edge, you know, radiating out. I came quite a way into the leaf. Again, that leaf is not waxed or anything. It was eco printed with as well. So I saved one of the leaves I used to eco print. I don't know if it was the actual leaf that came off there. It doesn't look like the same shape, but you know, that was the idea of that. Um, oh, this is a complete little woven thing, mostly plant materials, with some threads stitched into it here and there. Um, and down here at the bottom, <laughs> there's a little piece of this is Gallium odor, um, Gallium ver verum, sorry, which is wild, a wild plant that whose roots give a similar red to madder, only not as intensive as true madder. Um, but anyway, I was on a workshop with Caroline Bell, who I learnt so much. Um, from regarding eco printing and on the workshop it, its common name is ladies bed straw but we were calling it ladies bed sores and I've written it there to remind myself I don't know why we you know get a room full of women slightly giddy with the joy of eco printing and stuff like that gets made up doesn't it um this is another one of my little um what you call them sycamore you know helicopters we used to call them when I was little you know you throw them up in there and they do that as they fall to the ground um, and this again is um, a maple leaf and this is waxed and I couched it along its stem but glued I think it's hard to see sometimes what, what did I do what did I do in on the 13th of October in 2016 I don't know I think I glued the leaf part down and just couched the stem because it was maybe fragile. So you can do things like that as well, you know? Just It's just about examining the materials, listening to what they're telling you, and um, responding accordingly. And that's the end, that, well, it's not the end of the journal, but that's all the leafy things in there I wanted to show you. Um, this one here, there's a full flip through of this that I shared with my Kofi supporters. Um, some time ago. This journal I made when we sold our house in England in 2017 um, and came to France. So this was during that time of being, you know, between homes as it were. 
uh, and I really did want to show all of you this. I know some of you have been worrying about your journals getting a bit full <laughs> and asking me if I'm worried. Well, not really. It's it's literally round, but I like them like this and I make always make my wraps extra long. And this one has a soft cover, so, you know, it happily curls. You see the spine is indented. It's so... I mean, if you like that, then, then you know, do that. Look, look at it. I mean, I just, I just love, love it like that. It's no longer a book. It's, it's well, it is, but, you know, it's sort of an, an object. Do you know what I mean? Are you understanding me? <laughs> I hope so. Anyway, there's quite a few in here, so I'll whip through them quickly. Um, there is uh, an oak leaf that I found in the Dutch town of Geldrop. Oh, sorry, I banged you with my hand. Um, I must, I probably was staying there with hands while he was working. But it says fallen leaves on a balcony. I think the hotel balcony, this little leaf blew in. Now that is waxed, I think. Feels like it. And then I've just done this, let's put that away because that's ugly. I've just done that stitching all around the edge directly to the paper. I think stitching leaves to paper, if they're a bit fragile, gives them more support because it doesn't bend. This is um, cardi paper, so it's quite sturdy. If I show you on the back, look, you see the stitching on the back? Because if you stitch a leaf to cloth, the cloth is obviously very f pliable, so then the leaf can crack. So maybe that's something else to bear in mind. Here I did stitch two more onto this little cloth piece, which has got a little window in, see my finger? Um, and they're holding up okay. You know, again, they're in a journal. If you're making something that's not a journal, a wall hanging a wall hanging is probably okay. If they're waxed, that protects them. Um, if you're making something more usable, like a cushion or, um, you know, bags and things, then obviously you'd have to think differently. But certainly in a journal, this one, you see, has cracked here and here. And that's not waxed or anything, and that's just stitched directly to this piece of cloth. I'll show you the back. You see the stitching there on the back? I did use quite thick thread. I was, one thing I'd recommend is a fine thread and a fine needle. I've just cracked it again. You see, I don't mind that. It's just part of its story. It, the pieces, the fragments are all firmly stitched down everywhere. Even if little pieces crumble off and fall away, it doesn't matter. Even if and when eventually the entire leaf is gone, the outline of the stitching will still be there, you know? So it's just sort of thinking like that about it rather than, oh, I must stitch this leaf on, I mustn't break it and, or damage it in any way and it must remain the same forever, you know? You can't, don't, don't, you can't think like that, stitching with natural materials. Um, this has got seaweed on it. I was on the beach with, at my um, stepdaughter's place, dog sitting, I think. And that's actual seaweed that I've dried and stitched on there. That's some sea glass. Again, like I did with the little stones. And this is some plasticky twine that I was litter picking basically on the beach. But anyway, I've stitched it on there. It's better on there than floating about in the ocean. Um, these, I've got a few of these. I'm going to use one to show you. Um, these eucalyptus leaves. We were camping on Bodmin, not this, not in 2017, but a few years previously. I think these leaves are now about 10 years old or so, you know, f since I picked them up off the ground, under the tree, ready dried and I've done nothing to them there as they are. So if you're in Australia or if you have access to eucalyptus, go for it, they're wonderful to use, all different shapes. You know, you have the round ones, the long thin ones and so on. They're also great for eco printing, many of them. And so those, I've just stitched them into this little group of three and I've used the natural shape of the leaves and they sort of make another leaf shape, the three of them. Do you see what I mean? And I'll just use running stitch, nothing fancy. Just let the composition shine and this beautiful one in the middle that just has got this little foldy bit. And there you see on the back, so I stitched them, I stitched them together. The th I stitched these two to these, this one to these two. And then I stitched these two down. Because if you see on the back, you see there's only, whoops, stay open, naughty. You see there's only the outside stitching on the back. And you see that. So those are so sturdy, you can just stitch them to each other. With, again, with no tr no special treatment at all. Pick them, off, off, pick, pick them up off the ground and go for it. And here's another one. Look, I made a... Um, I think it already had a slight little crack in it, which I made bigger. 
and then I put a piece of um, red cloth behind it. There's another one I think later where you can see the back. And then I, I did eyelet stitch, base. it's eyelet stitch, but through a leaf, and then I stitched it onto this bit of linen. You see, do you see? That was a super duper one. Um, and there's another maple. Um, again, that's unwaxed, that's just as it came off the tree. And then it's stitched onto this piece of cloth just with little running stitches around the edge. One strand of embroidery floss by the look of it. Um, stitched to two layers of cloth. So not a really thin cloth, that's flannel. And then some cotton matisse, which is cotton and linen blend on the front. So this quite sturdy. You need to give them something sturdy to sit on, you know? You, if you sewed a leaf to a piece of fine silk, for example, it would crumple up very quickly. It needs something sturdy. And, 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 oh, here we go. Now this one, I've, I've um, stitched it to the page, so you can't see the back. I thought I had a loose one somewhere. Can I get that out gently so I can show you? Yes. Right, so you see on the back, do you see? All I did was stick a little scrap of red cloth an eyelet stitch around the edge, and that's how it looks on the front. I've done that a few times. I've given them away to people as well, and I'm going to do another one for you in a bit. Let me get this stalk back in. There we go. And that's literally just couched over the stalk, and a little cross in the top just to attach it to the page. And put that marker out. There's one more there. Oh yeah, this one. This I wove some reeds stalks, stemmy things. And again, completely untreated. I um, wove them and I did a little cross over every junction and then I stitched crosses in in between them. And again, they're quite sturdy. I've done nothing to them. They're not waxed or anything. And this in November 2017 was when I first discovered the grid poems of Brian Isset. And there I wrote one down. Do you remember in week nine when we did the nine patch? Um, that's where that came from. Okay, so that's that lovely, lovely roundy journal. And um, I did make this cover all in one, but if you'd made the cover and it was a bit short, you can always add a bit more to it, you know, if the journal gets big and round like this. I just, I just love these, but, you know, it's a personal thing. Some people would consider that a monster. <laughs> And the final one um, is this one. I think there's only one thing in here I wanted to show you quickly. Um, yeah, there's a ginkgo leaf. Again, untreated. That dried quite fragile. It is chipping here and there. So this top part is just glued to this paper. And I've glued it to flimsy paper as well, which probably didn't help. This is just some baking paper. But then I couched the stem, do you see? And the stem's actually broken, but this half's couched and this half's couched, so that probably would pull out if I pulled it, but I'm not going to pull it, so, you know, it's fine. So, there we go. So you can glue parts and, you know, but, I, I mean, I try <coughs> wherever possible to stitch if I can, um, just because that's what I like to do. So I hope you enjoyed that um, little look through my journals at how I stitch with fan materials. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to you joining me next time for more Cloth Tales. Bye bye.